um, my home and then charged me with everything that they did, possession of explosives, ar arson, um, uh, what do they call that, recklessly endangering, you know, riot, conspiracy, assault, simple aggravated assault, all these charges, everything that they did, they charged me with. It's named Nine. That's the name of it. It's titled Nine. Why Nine? Because it's nine of them that had to suffer. There's more than nine of them, but nine of them that have been incarcerated. I feel like it's a story that needs to be told. Nobody is, you know, given full recognition. Plus, I was reading up on it. This brother's been locked up for like 34 years. So it's like, plus, I just. People here makes for an interesting story, good subject matter, yeah. layers, depths, unsolved mysteries, plus they're beautiful people. Well, today marks the 25th anniversary of a massive police operation in Philadelphia that culminated in the helicopter bombing of the headquarters of a radical group known as MOVE. The fire from the attack killed six adults and five children and destroyed a, a, a 65 homes in an entire neighborhood. Despite the two grand jury investigations and a commission finding that top officials were grossly negligent, no one from city government was criminally charged. MOVE was a Philadelphia-based radical movement that was dedicated to black liberation and a back-to-nature lifestyle. It was founded by John Africa and all its members took on the surname Africa. Yeah, I mean, this piece, it shows it shows the history of Philadelphia. It shows part of the Philadelphia that only a lot of local Philadelphia people know about when the bomb was dropped. It was the death knell of a system committing suicide. It proved that a man called John Africa spoke powerful truths when he spoke about the nature of the system as corrupt, as flawed, as poisoned. Every day past that date has only proved it. This government ain't playing no games with black people. Y'all know that, don't you? You know, I thought long and hard about what I was going to say when I got up here. I don't know whether you know it or not, but this is my first speaking engagement since I've been released from prison. At least 10,000 rounds of bullets in on us. And if they admit to 10,000, you can probably double that. They used up all the ammunition they had out there. They had to send to the armory for more. Just how unjust society is in general and how art can bring that to people's consciousness in a way that can challenge the way they normally think about it. So this painting can be a reminder of something that happened historically and most people are used to hearing it from the side that say was presented on the news or through the media um, a long time ago and up till today. And suddenly you look at this painting and it kind of flips that around and so it gives you a chance to think about well, what is it, what was it, what must it have been like on the other? May 13, 1985 is more than a day of infamy when a city waged war on its own alleged citizens, but also when the city committed massacre and did so with perfect impunity. You ain't getting nothing, you ain't getting nothing else. Are you getting this rebel? You ain't getting this. This is not no. an art studio. You see the words up there? Does it say art studio up there? What it says? It says rebel studio. Show the people at home what it says. Rebel studio. There's strictly rebel commentary you're getting from here. That's it. Nothing else.